Thank you. Let's begin. So we'll connect to both our breath and our core. And that's simply an exercise in foregrounding the breath and configuring our feeling awareness. So when we select to be open, open the sense perception, open bodily Our pranayama today will make it really simple. And depending on your environment, how, how warm or cool it is where you are, uh, you may have to go lighter. So we'll start with the right palm forward, spread the heel of the palm, and we'll lightly draw the littlest digit back. Just a little bit, just just enough for, for there to register feeling, sensation. And with that new sensation, connect to breath. And the next digit, one full breath. So we can practice releasing through the elbow to open up the hand. And the next digit and so on. Again, it's not so much about the hand stretching, but maybe it has more to do with the hand opening. and hitching feeling or sensation plus breath I'll just continue on into the next hand. And again, feel for releasing through the elbow to open up in the hand. We're just settling ourselves into sense reception, sense perception. The mechanics of doing something configures the body a little differently than the mechanics of receiving, reception, being open to.
switch the cross of our legs? Then we'll go up a, a joint or two. Inhale, reach the, uh, the palms out, so they're facing the left and the right. The fingertips kind of flipped up toward the sky, flexed up. And now exhaling, actively pull down, curling the littlest finger, the ring finger, the middle, the index, the thumb, you make a big old wrap around and pulling the knuckles down. So now we're getting into the, the other side of the wrist. And inhaling, open back up. And then exhaling. And as I'm curling each finger down into a, a fist, is creating as individuated a movement as possible between the digits. So you can get all those little tissues right in between the knuckle, right in between the finger near the web. And again, once more, inhale, opening up the hands, fingertips to sky, palms away from ears. And exhaling, curling as individually, articulately. Thumb wraps around, the knuckles draw down. And release. All right, we're gonna just keep working up. <laughs> we're going to dolphin next. So, we set up on our elbows and our knees. And today we'll go palm up. Okay. And when I go palm up, I have to make a little extra concerted effort to send the arm, the forearm down, the back of the hand down. And the other little piece to this is when we set up palms up, the thumbs will likely want to flip up toward the sky like a hey, thumbs up. <laughs> so we'll actively be turning the palms up, the thumb tips toward the ground. So elbows under shoulders. And releasing the, the weight of the head. Exhale, and press the knees off the ground. I'm feeling the head release and relax away from the top of the lung. All right. And when we set the knees down, so we'll just set those down resting a moment. Mm -hmm. 
and do one more iteration, that flat prep version of Dolphin. So if you need to see the setup, I'll show it on one side. So this time around, we can go palm down. It's my one arm, palm down. The other palm will go near the knee. And if this is a new pose to you, this is the elbow is off the ground. So my arms are staggered. Okay, so I'm on one forearm and I'm on one palm. So it'd be, it's kind of like a tripod with a little kickstand. So I'll talk us in. We'll start with the right forearm down, just like dolphin, just like we had. And I'm placing the left palm near the knee. And then on exhale, we'll press the knees up. Now often I have to move my left palm just back an inch or so. The determining factor is the forearm vertical. The motion, one of the purposes we'll put the left hand there is so that you can reach that left elbow toward your left shin and feel that left shoulder blade moving. Those two shoulder blades are moving in quite different ways from each other. There you go. So it's a pulling back action. Now there's one more option here, if it delights you, is to raise the right foot to the right leg. If that feels a little too wobbly, we don't have to do it. There it is. There we go. How sweet. Yeah, we'll set the right foot down. We'll set the knees down. And we'll switch. We'll go left forearm down. Right palm down near the knee. And on exhale. Press knees up. And the first piece is just getting the right hand in the good, in the best spot. Our arm bones are all differently lengthed, so. And then the option of raising the left leg. And we'll set left foot down, knees down. We'll give all that a rest. <laughs> Lie on back. Have a, um... No, we're just gonna do frog today. No problem. So when we land back, bringing our knees over our hips, We'll separate the legs widely. So the uh, shins are parallel with each other. The feet is a teeny bit lower than the knees. Now, I'm not trying to hang my feet down, but really I'm putting the feet in the spot where my abdominal pressure can adequately keep my back, my sacrum, contacting the ground. So the position and the weight of the legs is also helping 
but back contact ground. Inhale the head and the shoulders off the ground. And then exhaling out, reaching through those frog legs. Sensing, maybe it's groin, perineum, and sinking the low belly down. And then inhaling again. Feeling breath occur in the hip sockets and the perineum. And the genitals exhale. The tailbone shifts, outreaching, sinking the low belly down, getting anything to move beneath the navel that we can find, and then we can always get more specific. Inhaling, and exhaling, shifting the tailbone toward the sky, outreaching through legs, sinking the belly in and down. All right, we'll do three more together, but without my cue. So we'll just continue, three more. feeling the tone of the lips. You can feel where the tongue is in the mouth. Maybe it's resting toward the bottom. Maybe it's starting to curl up or press into one cheek or one part of your palate. Just, just taking note where the mouth is. Might be trying to steer us. <laughs> When you're entirely through, we'll set the head down. We'll help the legs together. Perfect. So we're gonna do a little half varasana, and I wanna open up the option to one, do it in bridge, which I believe is just a little easier to navigate and get the foot and, or two, to do it from seated on, on ground. If you need to see, remember, just turn over, press yourself up to seated. And I'll just show you in this brief way. So this leg bent with the heel beside my hip is the, the half varasana. If I did not wanna go into bridge, I wanted to stay on the ground, I would walk my forearms down, and maybe that's great. I don't wanna go further. Maybe I bring my back to a little stack of uh, blankets, or maybe we do place the shoulder blades on the ground. And then just a real quick see, remember, if I did want to do this in bridge, would lay down, bridge up, use a block under the sacrum, and then draw the left foot back. So two ways we can go about this bridge might be a little more accessible. There's just one block, there's not maybe a fewer variables where we can lay back, lie back and draw the left foot back. So I'll let you select, you've seen how to get into each of those. One thing I like if I'm lying on the ground, shoulder blades to ground, 
is that my left knee, my Varasana knee, is on or very, very close to the ground. I'm leaving the right leg bent, so the sole of the foot's on the ground in each case. There you go. So this is option one. Now that we're all set up in our selected pose. Option two would be bringing the right knee toward the chest. And release. So we're gonna change sides. So if you're in bridge, the switch is fairly easy. Just set the left foot down, use your hand, draw the right foot back. If you're seated or lying, you may have to sit up again Set the right foot and then hand, arm. Walk your torso back to the ground. So option one is keeping the sole of the left foot on the ground, and option two is drawing the left knee toward the chest. All right. Let's exit. If you're in bridge, of course, just remove the black lowering spine. And When we press up, we get access to a wall, and we're working downward dog on the wall. We're working one leg reaching away from the wall. So if you know that you just, where, where you need to go in your room to get wall and set up, go ahead. And I'll just talk through it in case you need to see it. So I take my most, uh, get a native feeling downward dog, heels near the wall, step hip height. That would be the downward dog on the wall. And then the one leg reaching is like so. Okay. Of course, we'll do both sides. So if you're already in, you're, you're in it. I'll just talk through it again. So I've got the narrow edge of mat up against wall, taking downward dog, my heels touching wall. If you don't have any wall space, just downward dog will do. We could do the leg up. And there we go. I think we all got wall. Yep. 
Then, once we're in that L shape where the feet are on the wall, hip height, we can simply start to breathe and remain right here. This is option one, both feet on the wall. Option two is reach one leg away from the wall. And of course, we're keeping one, leg, one foot on the wall. There you go. A little bit lower. Uh, Mm -hmm. And so option one, when we get that, those feet on the wall, sometimes it's just a, a little play in um, just feeling that tiny little chest nudge toward the wall, which helps the feet stick, just acclimating to the mechanics of it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, if you are reaching one foot away from the wall, you just make sure you switch sides. There you go. And you can use those sit bone, those sit bone area muscles of cool lift the sit bones away from the head. Mm -hmm. And we'll keep playing with that. All right, no rush. If you've exited, we'll stand at the top of mat. All right. And moving through some suns, inhale. Arms lifting from the lungs, lungs supporting the head. Exhaling, fold. Releasing the weight of the head, the brain. Inhale, the left foot back, lunge, we'll set the knee down. Since we've done a few days of of lung awareness, we can keep sensing it into our movements, hands to ground, exhale, lowering down. Cobra, set the hands slightly in front of the shoulders, inhale, the lungs, the heart, lifting away from the abdomen, and again, there's no need to smash the upper back. And feel the breath in the backside also. Exhaling, lower, downward dog. Wait a moment in downward dog so that your neck can feel released before inhaling the left foot forward, lunge. Hands to ground, exhale the right foot forward, folding. Inhale, standing, Just reaching from the tops of the lungs, Exhaling, hands to heart. We'll do another inhale. Exhale, fold. Right foot. Inhale, the right foot back lunge, setting the knee down. Hands to ground, exhale. Step left foot back, lower, plank to ground. 
drawing the shoulders away from the jaw. Cobra, inhaling. So you can arc. And still breathe into the back, exhaling downward dog. Okay, just an extra moment for breathing, for releasing through the neck. And inhaling the right foot forward, uh, lunge. Hands to ground, exhale, step left foot forward, folding. Inhale, stand, arms overhead, exhaling, hands to heart. So a few extras, inhale, reaching up, exhale, fold. Inhaling, when we step the left foot back and set the knee down, give the knee a little extra cushion. In this way, our left hand can draw the left heel toward the butt, heel to butt lunge. Release. Archer in lunge. So first I can take the left hand behind the back and I can use the right hand, just kind of nudge that hand up. Inhaling, take that right arm up, fold, touch, connect. Archer. So this is a really nice place where you have the hands touching the back side of the body. As you can do a little active extending the breath into the back side. It's okay to, to be active with the breath and to give it directionality. That's, that's at the heart of a lot of energetic practices. Right? The moving of energy when we're first learning about this subtle uh, the substrate, subtle body, it's helpful to be active with it, to probe it, move it, send it, deliver it, nudge it, expand it, push it, squeeze it, move it, flow it. It helps us kind of work with the material so we know what subtle body is. And we release the archer. Twisting lunge, so inhale, I back my hips over left knee, raising the left arm from that sweet top of lung. Exhale that left elbow over the right thigh. And inhaling, when we release, we're going to set up for half moon. So, right hand goes to the uh, outside of the foot. I'm pressing off that back knee. Pressing that left, bringing that left foot hip height. And stretching it straight away from the bottom of the lung. Now, it's the same time. I'm sending the left leg away from my, my lung. 
can inhale the upper lung, the mid lung. Forward. The thing is to do with that left hand. Often we can put that left hand on the hip or we can raise it. Might also be helpful just to put it on some ribs. So you just have a little extra hint of, there's the lung. And release. Inhale. Set the left foot down. Exhaling, chaturanga. Inhale. Upward dog. Cobra if you love it more. Exhaling, downward dog. Right, so we do the other side. Inhale the left foot forward. Padding for the right knee, heel to butt lunge, right hand. Grab right heel, right foot rather. And even here, I can be, it's, it's that subtle, I can send the leg away from the, the bottom of the lung. Again, when I play with the objects of my awareness, which is really essential, sending the leg, I learn more about the object I'm Playing with and touching and probing and reaching and pulling and activating. So we set that right foot down, archer in lunge. We'll bring the right hand behind the back. And then the left hand can nudge that wrist up. Usually there's another inch or two that is helped up easily. Inhale the left arm, lifting it from the Top of the left lung. And we'll set the fingertips to hook or hold strap. And letting that heart, feeling that that heart is supported. So a little bit of that, sensing the lung behind the heart, under the heart. The heart doesn't have to hold itself up. <laughs> and release, twisting the lunge. So inhaling, letting that arm go, backing the hips up. Exhaling and bring this right lung nearer to the left thigh. Placing the elbow over the thigh. Maybe it was a lucky timing, but it was one of the things that occurred to me in reflection about my happening into this style of yoga is I think it, I was just in a really active phase of this subtle interior. So this was a very helpful practice to just 
play with all these objects that I felt were inside my body. Thoughts, feelings, emotions, beliefs, subtle energies, all of that subtle stuff, that interior stuff, the stuff of our personal, our subjective experience. Inhaling, unwind. Half moon. Left hand to the ground, right knee off the ground. Raising the right heel hip height. And for today, we, we give that right hand the option of touching the lungs. Or you can put it on the hip if your hips needs a little more mapping. We can be active, breathe down into that low right lung. Exhaling, reach that right leg away from that lower lobe of right lung. Mm -hmm. And in this way, as we're feeling leg and we're feeling lung, we start to map all that space in between. So we're starting to map through that intestinal space. You can start to feel the thickness, the density, the openness, the transparency of the those bonds. What's bonding our body to itself? What's unifying it, binding it, bonding it? And release, inhale, we'll go right foot down, hands down, exhaling, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. And press down to the tops of those feet when you're doing upward dog. So the, the knees are uh, floating off the ground, downward dog. All right, step to standing. Let's chat about our future. Strap, big loop. It's dancer time. <laughs> you could do dancer without a wall, because, you know, balancing pose. If you prefer to steady in, maybe you're having a, a hippity hop kind of a day. You can put the hip near the wall. Um, oops. So again, just a show reminder, I'm sure you all know where we're going with dancer. I get pretty close to the wall. I would say the most common uh, thing I offer if you're using the wall is get closer to the wall. Some people like to be next to the wall thinking they'll just flare their elbow out if they need to catch themselves. I would say negative on that. Get close to the wall so no flaring of the elbow needs to be done suddenly. We'll do each side about eight breaths. And then we'll do each side again. Most of you are well into it. That's great. And bringing the biceps quite near the ears. So actually engaging the chest muscles quite a bit. And sending the thigh away from the bottom lung. 
the bottom lobe of lung. And then reaching the arms from the top lobe of lungs. And if we attune to the lungs, I wonder how much softer and, and, and how much more ease there is in your chest and in your upper back. So ease, ease is key. And just at your own pace to switch sides. You've done eight breaths on one side. Do eight breaths on the other side. Finding ease all around the heart and the lungs. We'll do each side again. So just, I know we just keep rotating sides, but give each side two, two fair shakes. It's in those re revisits that we start to pick up from our previous mapping and awareness and gathering and mm -hmm. yeah. I know we can't necessarily see that back leg but feel that back leg reach to that back leg and it's the kind of a reach that illuminates, <laughs> helps us feel the bottom of the lung. So all of those organs that are supporting us. And maybe that's the inquiry in our practices how do I feel organs supporting me? I thought muscles, you know, maybe you're, you're very muscle focused for support and I've got to engage this muscle to hold on to this. I got to overlay some high tension strategy over here so I'm not in pain and then I have to, maybe we can feel that support from the organs. There you go. And just keeping those biceps really close to the ears. Doing what you're doing. If I'm kind of measuring with us, we may be getting in or finishing up the last side, last round, maybe. Starting it or finishing it.
and we'll stay near the wall when you're through with dancer. Part of our unwind from the back bend is actually doing just the, a portion of it, letting that low back hang down. I'm gonna use a block between my legs and stand about, I'll tell you, eight to 10 inches from the wall about 20 centimeters. So I'm grabbing this with my inner legs and just doing a teeny weeny little like shifting of the tailbone down. I'm not clenching my pelvis. I'm not clamping down on my butt cheeks. It's just a little slight positional shift. And now with my palms touching, I can touch the fingertips to the wall. Some adjustment forward or backward may be necessary. My forearms are parallel to the ground. And here, lifting, reaching the arms up from the upper lung. Let the legs engage the object. So you're doing that subtle little tailbone shift down. I almost think of those little pool chain lights. It's just the most delicate little pool chain, which allows you to feel just the un, the un back bending <laughs> through the low back, the lengthening. The biceps are close. If you've got some hair around your temple area, you can probably feel it with your biceps. And so letting that arm reach, gonna take us into the mid and the upper back. Specifically. So chest opening without back crunching. And release. One more unwind for us, and we'll put a bow on it. Have a seat. And do a chest opener. So I've got my right leg straightened. Um, I've got my left heel behind my hip. It's kind of pointed like half Harasana. Remember, you can always reposition your foot, bring it inside your groin. And exhaling, you take the right hand to the ground, the left arm raises. And I'm using this motion, this chest opener, to engage the inner right leg and to provide this little rotational move, this twist, which to me feels much better to my back as a release than a fold. So I am just playing this spirillic motion through the torso. Active inner right leg. What does active mean? I'm reaching through the ball of the right foot. You may feel that in the groin. Groin is back. And release, we'll switch sides. We got the left leg out. 
Well, for this chest opening move or this spiraling chest open move, we'll take the right arm up. And because we're using this as a, just a little back relief, post back bend, active, breathe into your low right back. Breathe into, you can conduct, you can you know, move the mind, move the breath, the mind breath moves into the waist, the hip, so the movements of our mind, the movements of our breath, the movements of that subtle experience, they too, like asana, <laughs> can be made fluidized. They can be fluidized. So I can reach in and probe, sense, breathe into a hip just with, with facility as I could shoulder, with the same facility and ease as I could neck or brain. Or so this ease of inhabiting our knee area. Making friendly. Making less struggle. <laughs> And inhale, we'll set that down, unwind. And we should lie back. So when we're lying back, we need additionally, like to just put the feet on the wall with the legs bent or tucked, or the legs up the wall. Those are nice. Nice positions. If you need to put the feet on the ground, knees bent. Just ensure that you're resting and cooling in a way that doesn't require effort from you and in a way that doesn't, uh, isn't promoting irritation. <laughs> And so now I just want to kind of bend us back into that reception sensing. We're active, we can send breath here, there. Action, active, inquiry. And now we're going to step back into reception so we're feeling the pulsation of breathing that the lungs already know how to do. That the back and the sacrum are already doing. Breathing shoulder joints. It's kind of a gliding, a back and a forth. Like when we dock a boat to a pier in the waves, it's just each lap of breath wave just carries, moves. The boat, the body, <laughs> the body relying, riding each breath, supported by each breath.
And so when we call up and attune to that experience, we can reach back and remember whenever we need and draw from that feeling of support. When you're ready, bend knees, turn to side, and press to seated. Namaste. Right, get you some sun gazing.